So Renegade just revealed a whole lot of new Heroescape info for the next wave of escape content. Considering my last recap was my most well-performing video, I mean, I kind of have to go back and do it again, right? So this video is designed for you if you don't have several hours of free time to watch the streams, or if you just hate reading. Now here's a brief recap of all the highlights and big news that just dropped. First of all, it's been confirmed that Heroescape does have a release path up into 2026. So it's nice to know that with these releases that there's a bit of momentum uh, paved up for the years ahead. So all the new figures and terrain accessories were revealed all at once. As in, in the pre-advertisement, we were shown the Kyrie box, which has some long-awaited checkbox finally marked. Both Vidar and Aquila have finally gotten their first Kyrie units, and Olar gets some more interesting Kyrie to add to his army. Interestingly, these Kyrie were presented as units following Valarik in the original HasLab campaign, and there were still been no units revealed for this general. Rubna received another Kyrie warrior, making the previously released Miserex a whole lot more useful. In summation, here's all the units released in this box. I'm going to butcher the names, and I apologize. Melki, who can both double attack and heal. We have Chamara, with, who can stop wounds, the fellow Olo Kairi with a d20 roll. We have Glenerva, who has a whole toolkit dedicated to not being hit or injured by attacks. Kilkarax, who can teleport enemies closer. And Queen Carrion, who can negate defense by stabbing the heart and ultimately giving love a bad name. Another box was revealed featuring the Iron Lich and the Wraith Riders. Now I'm trying to keep this video as free from editorializing as possible, but I do have to say the art style for these units are really great looking, and in my opinion the best we've seen so far. These figures seem relatively unchanged from their initial reveal in the HasLab campaign. Units in this box are the titular Iron Lord Viserot, whose most impressive feat is fitting on the peanut base, and the Wraith Riders who according to the lore are just three roly boys lost in space together. Both these boxes have the painted and unpainted options available, and are priced the same. The premium painted box retails for $65, and the unpainted box retails for $45. Also, again reminding you that the code WELCOME10, uh, you can use that to save 10% off your order, and if you're looking to buy from Renegade directly, I do have an affiliate link listed below. It costs you nothing extra, and does help further support this channel. You know, I just thought I'd throw that in there. Those looking to paint their own figures get some really neat resources. Painting keys were released for all the units using the Pantone PMS system. Uh, those who don't know, this is pretty much a color system used to designate the actual colors used for the models to help alleviate the subjectivity that comes from photos and ultimately allows painters to have a more accurate color to match on their minis. So Renegade has listed a partnership with Army Painter on their website, which provides a link to the Army Painter store. It's still unconfirmed at this time of this recording if this partnership will come in new forms of direct integration with escape units, like having unit-specific color packs from Army Painter, but on that, well, I just I guess we'll have to wait for more news. Lastly, a painter named Knox painted a Raylan for special presentation. I just really want to comment that I enjoyed the presentation, and was a neat little way to show that painting these models is both fun and easy. And here's hoping for some more paint tutorials in the future. Not that I know anything about that. Wink, wink. Also, terrain mongers can now rejoice, for several terrain expansions were announced, focused entirely on those sweet plastic tiles. Firstly, there was an announcement for the Land of Valhalla release, which is just a box of miscellaneous land tiles, 63 hexes total, and is a convenient way for someone to build up their terrain collection with new tiles. Also, after 20 years, we finally have it, the 24 hex sand tile. This offers no additional benefits to gameplay, but it's just nice it finally happened. And if you're looking to make a desert map, well, now is your chance. This terrain set retails for $70. Also, if you want some more sparkly water or to start building a wellspring reservoir, now you can do so. Renegade announced a new three-piece water tile, which doesn't have any different mechanical uses, but will make building rivers and big lakes a lot more easy to do. It's not the most competitive release, but if you're like me and like to build large and expensive set pieces, this could act as a good time saver. This set retails for $30. During a special presentation, Becca Scott of Geek and Sundry fame did a live unboxing of the Master Set, as well as the other Wave 1 releases. There's not much new info to be gathered, but it did give us a sense of scale of the Wave 1 release, 
And we also really got a good look at the new lore trees and walls. Lastly, I'm going to try to condense all the news for Gen Con and the competitive scene. Renegade is running 20th anniversary escape events, and most interestingly, the price of entry is a t-shirt. The t-shirt design was revealed, and honestly, I really like it. Some prizes were announced, including giving away the original Painted Masters from AOA. Local game stores will have the opportunity to host launch tournaments starting September 6th, and attendees can win Shiori there as well. It was also mentioned that all promotional figures will become available somewhere around three months after the initial release. Renegade will be displaying life-size models of both Loviatak and Rayland, and Rayland appears unmounted from her manticore. There's a secret presentation at Gen Con, which is limited to 60 attendees, and will have some big scape news for the year moving forward. It was also said that the booth will have some previews of new units coming out later, and it was recommended that attendees look at that. Heroescape Day, which falls on the third Saturday of October, will show the promotional release of Cornelius Breach. This figure, like other promotional figures, could be one for a participating local game store. His stats are unchanged from his initial reveal, but we did get a first look at his pre-painted color scheme. The Battle Network was announced and it will be an interface for users to plan armies, schedule events, track stats, and earn in-app rewards like profiles and the like. They plan on releasing more news on it now, as it's currently just in its beta form. Well, there you have it, kind of all the big highlights and details from Wave 2 of Heroescape being released by Renegade. If you're a Escape fan, you're eating good. There's some great stuff out there to look forward to. Again, you know, subscribe to this channel if you're looking to stay up to date. You know, I got a lot of cool stuff coming. You know, I have those aforementioned uh, painting tutorials coming. Uh, plan on releasing those in the next month or so, so you have some um, stuff ready for when you get that master set in your hand. And I'm the Rogueskaper, encouraging you to think differently. Be sure to subscribe for more scape related content and leave a comment below. What was your favorite or you know, least favorite part of the Renegade reveal? I love to look at those comments and see what people have to say. Personally, I'm looking forward to Glenerva. I think she has the most fun moveset out of everyone. And there's already some fun armies I'm planning around her. But other than that, I am tired. <laughs> I'm rushing to get this done before everyone else, but I'm failing miserably. So I'm going to leave you all with this and have a great rest of your day.